We both loved and hated playing Ready Steady Ship. This is going to take a little explaining. At this point, we are connoisseurs of games like Overcooked. We have talked about more than 20 on our channel, and these wild, wacky games just keep popping up in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, from medieval taverns to motor vehicle repair, valet parking, and the age of dinosaurs. But for today's adventure, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of an employee of one of the largest shipping companies in the world. I don't want to say its name, so we'll just say that it rhymes with Yamazon. The basic idea here is that your entire job is to package and ship boxes out as fast as you can by properly getting the factory's conveyor belt set up. But things go a little deeper than that. As with most of these games, we did not stay in the factory for long. We soon moved to work on rooftops, then a boat, a plane, and even space. Each time we got to a new area, we also got to enjoy learning and playing around with a new game mechanic and ditch our boxes in a new way. Whether it was launching them across rooftops, throwing them into the shredder, or dropping them out the cargo hatch of the plane. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. In order to really understand this game, we have to start way back at the beginning. The game consists of 30 levels, 60 if you count the solo campaign. Each of these levels has three stages, packed in as various checkpoints. The goal is to send off all of the boxes within the time limit to hopefully get three stars and move up the company ladder. Starting with level one, we were introduced to the basic building block of the entire game, the conveyor belt. There is not a single level in this game where these are not around. We got to drag around all of these different conveyor belts, slotting them into place kind of like a puzzle, making it possible for boxes to travel along them from point A to point B. Organizing and setting up these conveyors is key to beating every level. You have to figure out where to put them and what direction to point them in. Sometimes you won't even have enough and you'll have to start and stop the machine so that you can move the conveyors around. Or you'll have to deal with them breaking down and needing to be repaired by the recycler. At this point, we have a good understanding of how things work. You place conveyors and make sure the boxes make it all the way to the end. But there are constantly new things being introduced, and perhaps one of my favorite moments was when I realized that I was meant to throw boxes and let them slide across the wet floor. A point that I really missed when playing with Carly, and we just waddled around on the water trying to maneuver through and bring all the boxes in by hand. It was not until I was playing through the solo campaign that I realized how fun and unique that idea was. But things really started getting interesting with the forklift and crane. At first, I was so incredibly excited to play with these new game mechanics. I mean, it's a forklift and a crane, that's incredibly exciting. But as we continued through the game, I realized that they really just became quite infuriating. The forklift is fairly difficult to maneuver, which I think is intentional. It adds to the hilarity as we tried to control these fast moving machines and end up flinging a box all the way across the room and nearly toppling the forklift because we ran over something too fast. It was really fun the first few times, but the tasks that we were actually required to perform were so tediously difficult that they just became frustrating. It got to the point where neither of us wanted to enter the forklift because of the fine motor skills required. Don't get me wrong though, this forklift did bring some of the greatest laughs in the entire game. The sad part is that it also brought some of the most frustration. This piece of heavy machinery requires far more patience than we possess. However, since something new gets introduced around every five levels or so, we should move past the forklift and start working with the new spring-based conveyors. These had us launching packages back and forth from one conveyor to another, and often even across buildings. This was the best the game had been so far. The first few levels were a simple tutorial and had some tedious carrying of boxes back and forth. But now, the levels were getting more complex, with less busy work and more puzzle elements and frantic scrambling around. We enjoyed making sure everything was set up properly, especially as the levels got more spread out and felt a little bit like a Rube Goldberg machine, albeit one that frequently malfunctioned as boxes landed on corners or something and had to be picked up and manually placed back on. 
Moving through the game, we got even more fun mechanics. Some heavy conveyors were more difficult to move. We got conveyors to assemble and pack boxes that had to be manually operated, a conveyor that would equip parachutes to the boxes, and even some new wind-powered conveyor belts that not only moved boxes, but could move us as well. By the time all of the mechanics in the game are introduced, it is a wild ride of constantly trying to keep things under control. From running back and forth to repair conveyors, turning the machine on and off, assembling boxes and packing them on the line. It all becomes a bit of a hectic jumble. Sadly though, we never got to play any level with all of the elements included, but perhaps I should be thankful for that because it would have meant I had to drive another forklift and my gosh, I hate those things. Along with all of the new machines, we also gained new environmental hazards. Beware of dangerous poison pits. Be careful not to slip in the water or fall off a bridge and make sure you don't go flying off the conveyor into the recycler as you run around the room. Oh, and who can forget about those electric floors we were supposed to navigate through with the forklift. All of these incidents will be fatal to your humanity, if only for about five seconds or so. The game only supports two players in co-op and it does a decent job of getting us to work together. There was plenty of work to split between us most of the time, but on occasion we actually needed to press a button to open a gate or operate an elevator. I'll be honest, I did not play through the entire solo campaign because I purely play these games for the co-op experience, but I did give it a try. The solo and co-op campaigns are similar, but not entirely the same. Part of this has to do with making it possible to play the game solo, while another part is just wildly different. The levels felt more tedious to me as there was no one else there to help make moving boxes and conveyors around quicker, but other than that, I don't have much to say. The concept for this game is fantastic. I love the idea of working in a shipping company and I love all of the different pieces of the conveyor. Everything about this game fits this genre extremely well. With all of that said, what makes this game so conflicting for us? Before we dive into that, I want to invite you to help support the channel and keep the co-op games flowing by joining our exclusive membership program. You can support for as low as just $1 a month, and we provide some fantastic perks, from getting shoutouts in videos, to exclusive behind the scenes content, exclusive game takes, discounted merch, and more. You can learn more by going to the coopstop.com slash support, or clicking the first link in the description. We already mentioned our struggle with maneuvering the forklift and occasionally the cranes. There is a fine line between extremely tedious and a fun difficulty, and this game crosses that line sometimes with the forklift. We also had a couple of minor frustrations. There's an emergency exit lever that lets you move on past a level without completing it, but it only seems to work sometimes and we couldn't figure out what the requirements were. There was some atmospheric screen shake in the boat and plane levels that made Carly a little sick, so beware of that if you get motion sick fairly easily. This game, like many others, causes some fairly high tension between the two of us. This is not uncommon or unexpected because like we said, it happens in a very large amount of games like this. But we just wanna mention it as like a little point Beware for some fighting, and if you don't want to deal with that, then don't pick up the game. To help mitigate it, we often find that games like these are best in short doses. However, the main culprit of our frustration was the bugs and glitches. On multiple occasions, Carly got stuck in a crane without being able to move. I got stuck in a peanut packing machine and in a delivery zone. We glitched through some walls. Boxes would get stuck in places we could not reach. We were unable to move broken conveyors. The music would randomly cut out. If we died on an electric floor, we might respawn on the other side with no way across since we left the fork forklift on the other end. Gosh darn forklifts. The majority of these glitches meant that we would have to restart the checkpoint that we had almost entirely completed. In fact, on one level, we restarted about like four times or so. 
If they remove these glitches and give us a competent forklift driver, there would be little of significance to dislike. There were some very fun and funny moments in this game for sure. There are characters to unlock, a cute art style, a minimalist story, and a decent amount of replayability if you like getting three stars. It took us about six to seven hours to beat the co-op campaign and only cost $15, which is pretty reasonable when put next to some other games in this genre. We talked about more than 20 games like this, so click on this playlist to find some of them, find the ones that you like. I cannot wait to see you over there. We love you guys. Y'all are awesome.